Welcome to Jazz Piano Daily number 48. Today I'm going to show you how to improvise easier using scale blocks. All right, so let's jo uh, dive into this and let me explain to you, uh, first of all, what a scale block is. All right, now before we get into that, uh, we're going to use our progression from Angel Eyes. So we've been doing this uh, progression for a few days now, so we're going to continue with these first four measures of Angel Eyes. All right, so here is a blues scale block. A scale block is just taking a portion of the scale and usually breaking it into either three, four, or five note groupings. I guess you could do a two note grouping as well, but there's, you, don't, you don't get a lot out of two notes, right? Even three notes, not a lot out of three notes. I usually say uh, for absolute beginners to improvisation who really have uh, uh, you know, no experience improvising, then start with a three note block. Four note block is good as well. Okay, but the five is perfect for our purposes right now. So all I'm doing is I'm taking five notes of the blues scale. Right now, I'm, I just happen to be taking these five notes. I could also do those five notes, or I could do like that, those four notes, and maybe even add in those five notes. Okay, that note as the fifth note. Right. So the point is that I don't have to take right from the beginning of the scale. Another way of looking at it is, look, say this is your C major scale, right? Well, it is your C major scale. If I were to play the first five notes, I could do that. I could play the first four. I could also do my scale block like this out of the C major scale. This is going to give you more of a Lydian sound, okay? But the point is you don't have to play the entire scale. So why would you do that? The reason you do that is that a lot of times, uh, two things. Number one, you got to remember all the notes of the scale. So by having fewer notes, it's a little bit easier. Number two is that you don't have to worry about the crossing under or crossing over. The fingering is what affects improvisation for most students. Remember, when you're improvising, a lot of different things are going on. You're going to have an accompaniment down here that you really have to know. You have to have a scale or something that you're going to use for improvisation here in the right hand. And then if you have fingering issues of having to cross, that's another thing, rhythm, so on and so forth. So as you start to reduce and get rid of some of those barriers, it makes it a lot easier. All right, so anyway, here's your five note C major, um, uh, uh, sorry, C blues scale, five finger pattern here, okay? So all I'm playing is C, E flat, F, F sharp, G. Now what you could do is you could just take these five notes and just go at it and try, you know, coming up with stuff. You could also, if you wanted to, kind of write down your improvisation and really kind of think a little bit more about what notes out of that blues scale you want to use. So check this out. I uh, have the chords in here. Oh, and by the way, there's a, another thing I wanted to tell you as well is this. See these right in here? These are called slashes, okay? Um, and when you see this, it basically just means that you're going to be playing time. Now, sometimes, uh, well, oftentimes in 4-4 four, four time, you'll see four slashes. Sometimes you might see something like this written in your music, and it's, and it's not an actual note, right? It's these slashes, but you'll see a rhythm attached to it. That means that they want you to play that chord in this rhythm, right? All right, so anyway, you'll see what I did is I created a simple improvisation. I'm just going to play the bass line uh, that we've been doing, all right? So... Sounds fine, right? Again, you know, these are, this is kind of simple improvisation. We're not taking it outside, we're just staying within, you know, these five notes. But it just makes it an easier way for you to be able to kind of get into improvisation quickly. All right, so which notes am I choosing and why? That's probably the big question that you want to know. All right, so first of all, remember, I'm only using these five notes. I'm trying to stay within these five notes. But when I play these five notes, I want to think on each one of these chords, like, okay, so my C minor 7 chord, well, which notes are going to sound good out of this? Now, if I started right out of the gate, right? I mean, I can make it sound bad because I'm just playing these two notes, which are really, really tense. The F sharp on a C, no, it said I started on the root. And I went to the fifth and the third. And when I go to the G flat here, that's really the third of the D7. And here's the ninth of the D7. Now this is your major seventh, but it's uh, of, of the D flat, right? But it's resolving quickly 
to the E flat, right? If I, if I didn't like that, I could have gone back up to F here as well. Could have changed that to the note F. And then what did I end on here? This is the fifth of A flat. And then what did I do? Oh, well, this, this is kind of nice. See how I did that um, uh, upbeat? Uh, ba di ba di ba di ba, right? And now there's one thing that I did a little bit differently here. See how I went down to that D? Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change it so it's exactly just from the five finger. Sometimes you'll notice that you'll end up putting in different notes and that's absolutely fine. That's actually the whole point. Uh, but anyway, to keep it within the five notes. Right? And then what did I end on right here? I ended on my F. Right? And then the F works perfectly on that D minor 7 flat 5 because it's the third of my D minor 7 flat 5 chord. Right? So if you were to go through and analyze each one of these notes, you'll see that they have some kind of function or they work on the chord. Right? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take these five notes and try to find which notes out of the five are going to work well with these chords. All right, let's say I come up with something different. See how I can also do that as well? Get a little bite in it. All right? So you can play around with this really on any scale. It works really well on the blues scale, and I would suggest trying to do that first block. Now, once you feel comfortable with that, you can move up to that or even this one. Now, what I'm going to also show you in an upcoming lesson, I'm going to show you how to do that call and response that I was just doing there. But first of all, try playing around with those blocks and just see how that feels playing those five notes. Like I said, it doesn't have to be five, it could also be four. So you could do those four and then those four, or try those five and no, sorry, and those five. All right, so have fun. I'll see you in the next lesson. To get the first 45 pages of music for free, just go back to jazzpianodaily.com. If you liked the video, please be sure to click the like button and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. To watch the rest of the lessons in this series, just click on the playlist to the right of this arrow. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next video.